David worshiped the Lord. He danced before the Lord. He danced out of his clothes. <laughs> his wife was so embarrassed. Oh my God. Because she was like, oh. But my goodness, God saw what he was doing and he honored that because he gave him everything. He worshiped him with all of his heart. And that's what God wants us to do. Amen. Worship him with all of our heart. Yes, Father. Our soul, our mind, our strength, everything that's inside of us. He gave us 100%. Why should we give him 75? 95, 99 and a quarter. That won't do. No. Since he gave us his all, I think we should give him all. I think that's reasonable. So, thank you for praising and worshiping with us. I, I'm glad you guys are just clapping and just having a ball. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And he also loved it. When he looks down at us and he sees us just worshiping, he is just delighted. And you know what he also loves when we blow him a kiss. If you want to blow him a kiss now, blow him a kiss. He loves that. He loves it. So thank you so very much for being a part of our, our um, gathering here, our service. It is a privilege to have you here at Joy, all who are visiting. And we have some family members visiting, and, and that's always a joy. Sometimes it's the hardest thing to get your own family to come to church. <laughs> is it true or is it true? That's right. It is. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we're just glad that our family could be here with us visiting. Uh, we're always excited about that. And um, we want to welcome you all to Restoring Church of the Living God, where our desire is to be a part of the restoration of people's lives, their minds, their bodies, their spirits, to see souls saved for the kingdom of God, to see souls delivered, healed, restored. Amen? Amen. So we want to welcome you, and we want to welcome those who will be watching later online. We thank God for his presence with us thus far, and we are looking forward for his continued presence as Pastor Wayne Stewart comes to the podium to deliver yet another word, another word. which he just delights in doing. <laughs> yes, he does, right? Yes. <laughs> Yes, so Sister Veronica will not be here to witness this because she's gone on for a little bit, but right. we'll have to tell her that you did it again. I did. Yeah. So um, without further ado, I want to um, ask that you would stretch your hand this way and um, as we pray over him, or he might want to pray over himself. Which, which one do you want to do? No, I'll have you guys pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he'll take all that he can get. Mm. And he has been praying for himself as well, and I've been praying. So Lord God, we thank you for this servant yielded to your will. Lord Jesus, it's not his will, but your will be done. Lord God, he might not think that um, he might be competent for this, but you have called him, you have chosen him, and therefore we know with that you will equip him, Lord God. Equip him even for this word that he's going to bring forth. Lord Jesus, let it be your word coming out, Lord God, from, from his spirit, not just from his lips, but from his spirit. You touch him, God, and use him, Lord God, for your glory. And Lord God, let your word go forth with might and power. You said your word is sharper than any twigged sword. It breaks down, Lord God, even to the, the dividing of the flesh, the bone, the marrow, and everything, Lord God, even speaking to our spirit, man. Your word is able to do it and bring conviction. Your word is able to heal, to deliver, to set free. Your word is able to bring encouragement, Lord God, healing of all sorts. And so we ask that your word would go forth now. You said you would not let your word return to you void. It would accomplish what you please. So let your word go forth with that power and with, with, with that mission, Lord God, to do what you wanted to do in the hearers, Lord God. And so we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for using this vessel to bring forth your precious word. 
In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. It's a privilege to be able to come up here, even though it's once a month. And you guys are privileged to be here on that day. What is that? <laughs> oh, man. So, I thank you for that, and I thank you for the prayers and the encouragement as I bring the word that the Lord has put on my heart to, to share with me, myself too. Okay? It's not just for you, I mean, the word is for us too. Everyone. Everyone. Right? So I thank you for being here, being able to partake of this word with, with me. Um, it's the first month, Sunday of the month, and it's normally when I take up the, the, the podium here <laughs> and say, okay, I'll give, I'll give wifey a, a break. <laughs> so it's that time. So anyway, so what the Lord has put in my heart to share is about the, what it teaches us, right? The word here in this Bible that we all have, right? Whether it be on our phone, our tablets, our computers, in our laps, wherever. It's there for teaching, for encouragement, Amen. for strengthening, and all those others that it's there for. Full of, of, of word, the word from God. Some people might say, some people have said, that it's, man wrote it. And man did write it. But it was inspired that's right, that's right. from God mm -hmm. through that person, through that man, mm -hmm. to write down what God had inspired him and told him to write down. That's right, that's right. right? It didn't come from that person, from that man. It came from God above. Amen. Because no man would be able to write down those things in the that's word right. here and be able to cut and change lives like that those words That's have right. only from God right. only from God Amen. so we have to honor that and, and respect the fact that it's what it's, it's coming from it's a word from his own mouth so my subject today is actually as I was talking about teaching listen to my teaching so it starts out with um, with Matthew 7 24 through 27 and we can read it together if we, if we, if we can. It says, Therefore, whoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And you know, when you read this, you're thinking about a person's house, right? What they built. But when you dig deep and understand what Jesus is talking about, it's something else. And we're going to go into that. So he says, he, 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 he says, uh, when you hear these sayings, right? And he was talking to the multitude, right? That had gathered to hear him speak. Because they always wanted to hear him speak. They come from far just to hear what Jesus had to say. It was so powerful. Amen. Amen. So I went back into this chapter 7 and went back to the very beginning, verse 1. And the sayings he's talking about starts with, Judge not that ye be not judged. That's his saying. That's the first, first verse. The second one in verse 3 says, and why beholdest, I mean, why stare? 
Thou that mote that is in my brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in mine own eye. Another saying. Another saying, chapter 6, I mean, uh, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast you pearls before swine, lest they trample them on their feet and then turn and rend them, rend you. So talk about holy things. Holy things is precious. Beautiful. You don't want to just throw them to anyone that don't won't appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. In seven, chapter uh, verse seven, ask and it shall be given you. Seek you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Not the same. Eleven. If then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? 7.12, saying number 12. Therefore all things whatsoever you shall, you would that men should do to you, do you even to them? For this is a law and a prophet. So he said, don't do to others that you wouldn't do unto yourselves, right? 13. Enter you into the straight gate. The, the wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there which go in their acts. 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Mm -mm -mm. 15. Beware, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And 20. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. Mm -mm -mm. 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth it, it the will of God, my Father, the Father, which is in heaven. So these are the sayings that he was telling them in this chapter. All right. I'm used to my um, my tablet. My tablet got discharged this morning, so I was. Trying to get it going, it wouldn't charge. So I had to go through the whole way, pay, pen and paper. <laughs> Sandra's way, pen and paper. So you, you not only have to hear the word, right? Which is reading it and hearing it. But you must do it. Right? These sayings he's talking about is that not you just, just listen to me and just go on your way and everything's hunky-dory. No, you have to hear, listen, and do it, right? You, who would go to school and go to college and spend all those years of studying, right, right, Melissa? And get all that knowledge and skill, learn all that knowledge and hear all that was taught. And you don't go out and practice it. Don't go out and do it. It, was a, it would be a waste, right? Basic, basic stuff. To become a wise man for what he built was was strong founded on a rock right so when we listen and obey god's word you are actually changed into a person full of wisdom right? from god from jesus because he's talking wise stuff so we become wise when we actually put what we hear and what we learn into practice so the word wisdom in hebrew Meaning for wisdom is chokma, C H O K M A A, chokma. The ability or result of an ability, the ability or result of an ability to think and actually utilize knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insights. That's wisdom. A wise man is a man of wisdom, right? Think about King Solomon, who when he asked God, what, should I, what shall I give thee? When he asked, God, God, God said, what shall I give thee? 
And of all is all that Solomon could have asked for, right. enhanced abilities. He could have asked for treasures, yes. which he already had. He could have asked for more, right? Oh, oh, you know how unsatisfied we could be at times, right? Amen. Treasures of the world, blessings. He had blessings, favor, riches. He could ask all these things. Mm -hmm. Land, more land, more homes, more buildings, mm -hmm. more armies, larger armies. That's right. That God could have given him. Mm -hmm. But he asked for wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom and understanding. My God. If you have that, you have everything, right? Yeah. In First King three and five, in Gideon the Lord, in Gideon, in Gideon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, "Ask what sh I shall give thee." Is that on there? No. Is it okay? Then Solomon praised God for all the great things He had done for him, for his for his father, King David. Great mercy, truth, righteousness, uprightness of heart, great kindness, given, given him a son to sit on the throne, which is David. Solomon. Solomon said, Give there thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. And he had a multitude, a multitude of people, right? That I may discern between good and bad. The speech pleased the Lord so much that Solomon, what Solomon had asked for these things. God said, because you asked for these things and did not ask for long life, riches for thyself and of thine and of thine enemies, but ask for thyself understanding of discerned judgment, I had given thee a wise and understanding heart. He didn't ask for all those wonderful things. So he gave him what he asked for. You remember the, the story of the two, the two mothers that came to the king. Mm -hmm. After one of them had lost their, their child, their baby. They had actually, one of them had actually rolled over onto their child, right? And, and, and killed it by accident. And they both came to, to, to King Solomon, asking, telling them what, what happened to the child, right? What happened to them? And, 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 and one of them was saying that this one here rolled over on their child and, and she's trying to say, it's my, it, 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 that this child here is my child and so on and so forth. And, and it came to the king to make that judgment, make that decision, decide which should get had that child, right? And what happened? The king and his wisdom right. said, bring a sword. Mm -hmm. Lay that child down there. Let me huh. cut it in two. Huh. And you know, you know a, the real mother is going to say, no, 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 no. Let her have it. Let her have the child, but don't kill it. Yeah. Don't kill my child. Yeah. Let her have it. That's right. And that was the deciding factor. Yes, yes. The wise deciding factor, who the real mother yes. was. Wisdom. Yeah. So we can get that same wisdom too, right here, from the teaching of the word. So if he hear them and do them not, it's like a foolish man who failed at what he built. In Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, Talking about foolish men now, right? Said, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosoms of fools. Proverbs 18 and 6. A fool's lips in, enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. In the um, English Standard Version, it says, a fool's lips walk into a fight. And his mouth invites a beating. No. Which is what it is, a stroke, right? You know what happens out there in the bars and all those things? They get they, their big mouths and they're routing themselves and they think they know Come everything on. and can end up being thrown out. They're all beaten up. 
in verse 7 of the same uh, word, say the fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his, of his soul. Um, about foolish men, right? Psalms 107 and 17. Fools, because of their transgression, their immorality, and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. So they get all these things happening to them all the time, back and forth, because of their transgressions and their immorality. So does faith in Jesus always result in prosperity, ease of life, freedom from disease or harm? No. Right? Jesus himself warned his followers of exactly the opposite. Mm. That the path of life was difficult. Mm. It's a difficult one. Entered through a narrow gate. Mm. Jesus described difficulty facing every human life using the picture of a great storm. That's what he meant to say in the first, when we first started, right? The rains will fall, right? On all of us, the good and the bad. The floods will rise around us all. And the wind will strike. All those uh, tornado that's happening that you've seen in the, in, on the news. Is it, is, it, is it going around the good and just heading for the bad? No. No, it's not. So Christ does not promise there will be no storm. What he does promise is that those who trust in him will survive the storm right, and the perils yeah. and the winds yes. and the tornadoes and the hurricanes. Yeah. He's using the word in the picture of building a house. The house is a person's spiritual strength. Yeah. That's why I told you like not about a house, it's about right. this house. That's right. That's right. Amen. There you go. The house is a person's spiritual strength, their beliefs the life they construct as a result. Those who live by his teaching will be like a man who has built his house, this house, on a foundation of rock. The rain will fall, the floods will come, the winds will blow and beat down the house. But the house stood strong through all, because of the foundation, it was sound. So what are some of the storms in, 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 the, in our lives? <clears throat> we look at what's, what, what's the stories in the Bible. The difficulties. Jesus and his disciples, right, were crossing the Sea of Galilee. And what happened? That storm took over. The sea was rocking, the boat was rocking, the flood, the water was, was filling the, 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 the boat. The boat was sinking, and what happened? Their faith brought them through, and the faith, they saw Jesus way off and came in. And who was it that he asked? Peter. Peter asked, let me come to you. And because of his faith, he got out of the, water, out of the boat and walked on the water. The water. But then he started looking around and not focusing on God, on Jesus, not focusing on his faith and keeping his faith. And what happened? He started sinking. He started sinking. So you have to keep focused on God. You have to keep that faith. Yeah. All right. Adversities. Job. You all have read about Job. If you read the Bible, you've read about Job. You've heard about Job. Job was a man who God loved and lived a blameless life. He was blessed with wealth, mm -hmm. large family, yes. <clears throat> good health, cattle, land, servants. servants. And Satan challenged God saying that Job only served him because he had been blessed by God. And he had a hitch around him. But God allowed Satan to take everything away from Job including his children, his wealth, his land, his cattle, his servants, everything, except for, except for his 
soul, and for, except for his heart, his belief, his trust in the Lord. Job was left with nothing but his faith. That's all he had. He kept that faith in God. And that faith is what brought him through. And in the end, is was all that he lost was returned sevenfold. Sevenfold because he trusted. He didn't give up. He kept his faith. Double? Yeah, it was double. Persecution. We are all persecuted at times, right? Even because of our beliefs. Not so much here in the Western world, but in other countries you heard persecuted because of holding the Bible, because of meeting, because of, because of believing in Christ. Paul described the, the, the many trials he was faced as a follower of Christ, even back then. He has been imprisoned, beaten, shipwrecked. Yes, yes. He has his face, he faced danger from robbers, his own people, from his own people, even the elements. Despite all this, Paul remains steadfast in faith. Doubt. A man brings his own his, his son to Jesus, asking him to heal him. The boy was possessed, right? By demons since childhood. And the demons has caused him to have seizures. Through, throw him into the fire and the water. And Father asked him for help. And what did Jesus say? If you can believe, yes. all these things are possible yes. to him who believes. Yes. The man responded, Do you believe? And the man responded, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And that was all that was needed his belief, his trust. So not only have to be told to believe, you have to actually to put it in action. Do it. It's not just word. Put it in the action. Do it. The same stone will come against those who do not trust in Christ and follow his teaching. If you do not follow and trust in Christ. The parable of this story is that the house of one's belief and, and faith must be built on something solid and true, which is Christ, Jesus Christ, only in order to withstand the attacks that we all face. And the, in, of the world that he illustrates as great storms, heavy rains, falls, floods, and strong winds. So we have to trust in Christ to help us through these times. And Jesus is saying now these who don't follow the teaching once they have heard it are like a man who built a house directly on sand. He calls his man foolish for using, a, using sand as the foundation for a house. The result of this house once storm hits it will be very different than the wise man's house. Right? Who would build a house on sand? Unless he just wanted to last a week, last after the first wind, the first storm. No, you don't. You build it on a, found, a solid rock, a solid foundation. So Jesus is emphasizing the difference. It's not between merely hearing, not hearing his teaching, but but actually doing it. The difference comes in living by Jesus' teaching. Mm -hmm. Those who truly believe Jesus' words will follow them as they carry out their everyday lives. Yes. So in closing, I've, I've got to tell you, I won't be long. <laughs> A person who does as Jesus has taught is wise, right? Are we all wise? We try to be wise, right? We're trying. We're trying. Each and every day. So no person, Christian or otherwise, 
His promise to escape the storm of life. Those who are solidly rooted in Christ, however, will stand strong through them. The person who hears Jesus' words but continues on without doing them is foolish. Yes, yes, good. That's good. The same storm will level that person's life. The cons consequence will be dire. Not the least of these, which is an eternity separated from God. So in John 3, John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So we are to follow the teaching. Follow the word. Follow the word. That's how we make it in this life. Yes. It's gonna be. It, he didn't say it's gonna be hard, easy. He didn't say it's gonna be sit down and work, sit back and enjoy life. At times it will, and, and it can be, but it will come. Yes. And without him on our side, without him covering us, without him carrying us, at times mm -hmm. we can't make it. So be wise. Do it. Do the word. Do the his saying. Do his teaching. So that we can make it in this life. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he said, right? Yes. If you love me, keep my commandments. You can't love him and not follow what he's been taught. Amen. Right? You can't go to a school and university and not put into action what you've been taught. You'll be wasteful. Right? So I thank you for a short time. And my wife is saying, oh, I want to hear more. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know how I am. I'm, I'm concise, I'm to the point, and yes. present. Yes. So I thank you for your time. Amen. Give pass away the hand. Did you do a good job? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. I hear the amen and praise the Lord and all that going on, but you're okay. It's because you were drinking it, and it was just, you're soaking it in, just like that. And it's like, I, oh, I forgot to say praise the Lord. Oh. But I think he was encouraged up here. Amen. amen. Thank God for this word. Um, good word. You know, as he says, we go to school, right, Olam? And we are being taught English, math, science. All that good stuff. Yes. And at the end of the grade period, what happens? We get a test. Yes. And, ah, an exam. It's to see if we were really listening and taking notes like Sister Black over here. She yes. takes notes. <laughs> were we listening? Were we heeding the teaching? And um, we're, we're grading on it now. So Jesus is actually taking. <laughs> and he's looking at these. He's giving us these little tests to see how we're doing. Because he wants to make sure that when the winds come and the rains of life, and they do come, as you know, these, these things that tend to want to get your attention and try to get you to, to just give up and to be destroyed. When they come, he wants to make sure that we are strong, our foundation is strong, that we have the word inside of us, the basic teachings that he has given us. Sometimes we have to come back to the basics. Yes. And this is one of them where, you know, when, when we read the word or we hear the word in church, it, it's good to say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Lord. That was a good word. And that's where it stays. We go back home without the word. Mm -hmm. But we have to have open hearts, open spirits to absorb the word so that the word can work 
the word actually works, you know. This word here that he was showing us right here in this Bible that you have, is not just black and white on the paper. So, okay, that's a nice word. This word is alive. It is alive. And if you let it work inside of you, if you open up and let it work, you will see that it is alive. I remember when I got saved and my cousin spoke the word to me. One of them could have been John 3.16. I thought, okay, good. I'm going to hear it right here, and it's going to go through this one. He had been trying for years. And lo and behold, for some reason, that word that he spoke would not get out of my spirit system, Melissa. I left Hopewell, turned over, went back to Kingston. And the word followed me around like this, Mrs. Black. I went here, the word went here. I went over there, the word went with me. I was like, what is this? That's right, Ariel, that's right. The word would not leave me alone. It is alive. These teachings that, that Jesus puts in this word right here, they're for us to absorb, for us to listen to, not just say, oh, but what a nice word. It's so beautiful. I put it in a glass case, and I admire it. I come and dust it off every now and again. It's not a nice word. It is to be applied to our lives. So that same word followed me around, and I finally surrendered and said, Lord Jesus, I am not going to run anymore. As a teenager, I was telling him I was not going to run anymore. My life belongs to you. I give you my life. The teachings that he was talking about, he didn't just put them in the word because they sound nice. And they're to be admired. But they are to be applied to our lives, to our hearts. Nobody builds a house on sand unless he's crazy, foolish, right? Because you don't know when that, that storm is going to come and top over your house. So if, if the, the fact that Jesus is saying, let me give you this teaching, it's not, as Pastor Wayne said, it's not, it's not a house, a physical building he's talking about. It's your life. It's my life. He doesn't want us to topple over. Amen? Amen? So isn't God good? He could have just said, let them figure it out for themselves. I'm just going to put a few words in the Bible. I'm not going to really teach anything. I'm just going to let them just figure it out. But no, you and I went to school to learn something. So we go to this word to learn something. And this is how we learn. We listen to it. And then what? After we listen to the word, what do we do after we listen to the word? We apply the word and we walk the word by the grace of God. Amen. So we thank God for that. And um, I hope somebody got something from this. I know I did. And um, we always need a reminder to stay close to God's word. If you're ever in trouble, if you're ever in trouble, go to this word. I'm serious. If you ever find if you ever find yourself in a certain situation and you are you find that you're somehow you're becoming discouraged, your spirit man is 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 under attack maybe because of something that has happened, something that was said, a conversation you might have been involved in, go to the word. And you <laughs> You will believe how you can be just lifted up in five minutes. Go to your devotions and read that. I experienced that just last night. I was in conversation with someone and I knew it was a direct attack from the enemy. And I realized that my spirit needed to do something. So I went to my devotion and I read about two days worth of devotions. <laughs> And I said, aha, uh -huh. that one of them hit the nail on the head. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is what I needed. This word right here, if you and I 
We'll stay close to it and ask the Holy Spirit to open up our eyes to understand, just like we spoke to, to the disciples in parables, to the people in parables, and he explained it later to his disciples. The understanding, ask him to open up your eyes, eyes of your understanding, so that when you read the word, it will not be confusing, and you will get exactly what the teacher is, like a good student. And I think one of the words that you said before that you might have mentioned in study to show yourself approved unto God and vision. All right? Rightly dividing the word of and see, so that so that when you get the exam, you'll not be ashamed. You won't get a zero, you won't get a fifteen, you won't get a twenty or a fifty. Pass mark is what, seventy-five or eighty now? How much is pass mark? Seventy seventy-five? 60. 60, see the pass mark went down when we were going to school. Sister Black, I think the pass mark was 75. And some places they pushed it up to 80. So now they've pulled it down to 60 so that the students can actually pass. I don't know what kind of pass mark the Lord has, but he's a gracious God, a gracious teacher. So don't you just love him today? Do you love him? Can we give him a hand clap of praise? And we raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, the Bible says, listen, which man, which of you looks into a mirror and you see yourself, Aria, and you see yourself and you look at yourself in the mirror and then you walk away and you say, I, 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 how did I, what do I look like again? <laughs> Which person does that? We ladies do that, right? We try to make ourselves presentable as much as possible. So we look in the mirror and we do this and we do that. And, this. and then we walk away, we're like, yeah, yeah, that, I, that image sticks with you. The Bible is compared to the mirror. We look at the mirror and we see ourselves. I said, oh goodness, mm, I don't look so good in that area. Mm, Lord, help me please. But you can't walk away and say, I don't know what I look like because I look into the word, the mirror, and it showed me that yeah, some things need fixing. Some things don't look so right. This needs straightening out here. That needs there. So we look into this word and we say, Lord Jesus, help us to walk in your word. Amen. That's right, baby. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> praise the Lord. So thank you so very much, Pastor Wayne. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise for the word, and for Pastor Wayne, delivering it in such a beautiful way. Amen. 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 All right. So um that song that um that, that I had asked you to play. Maybe we can play that at the towards